Hi, my name is Bill Horn. I'm a principal product manager here at AWS Cryptography. I run our cryptographic computing program. And today I'm going to tell you about some of the things we're doing in AWS around cryptographic computing. So first, I want to start by talking about this problem of secure data collaboration and a new service we launched called AWS Cleanrooms. Then I'll describe in detail what cryptographic computing is. I'll talk about some of the things we're doing there. And in particular, I want to introduce this new uh, feature of AWS Cleanrooms we've introduced called Cryptographic Computing for Cleanrooms, or C3R for short. So let's start with secure data collaborations and what we're doing with AWS Cleanrooms. So the idea behind a secure data collaboration is that multiple organizations might have sensitive data sets that they would like to merge together, bring together to do some sort of analytics or data processing to gain insights from that data, but the data is sensitive. And so they can't share it with their collaboration partners. So how do they do this? How can they leverage the, the value of their data through collaboration without sharing it? Let me give you some examples for the types of things we think about when we're thinking about secure data collaborations. So first, I have an example here of a group of banks that would like to collaborate to build a machine learning model, say a machine learning model of, say, credit card fraud detection. Now, they have some data sets from their customer data, includes examples of where they've seen fraud within their own bank. Um, but they don't want to share that with the other banks because it's business sensitive data. They don't want to give away any of the details about their customers or what's happening within their organization. But they still want to leverage all this data together and somehow build this improved uh, fraud detection model that they otherwise couldn't build by themselves. Here's another example, advertising measurement. Uh, this often happens, there are retailers who are advertising their products on some sort of publisher site, and they wanna get some insights into how well their advertising campaigns are working. So here, for example, I have a footwear company that advertises its product on a social media site. They wanna determine how well their ads are performing. Now, the footwear company has information about its sales, but it doesn't wanna share that with the social media company because that's business sensitive data. Similarly, the uh, social media site has information about user engagement data, but that's privacy sensitive, and so they can't share it with the footwear company. So how do they bring this data together in order to do these types of advertising calculations? One way to do this is with something called a clean room. And a clean room is essentially a trusted third party, in this case, AWS, where the collaborators can give their data to this clean room. The computation happens within the clean room environment, and then the result sets are reported back to the collaborators. So AWS has recently introduced a new service called AWS Clean Rooms that does exactly this. It allows you to create clean, clean rooms in minutes, collaborate with your partners without having to share your raw data with each other. So it's very simple. You create a clean room, you add participants to that clean room, and you start collaborating. There's already hundreds of thousands of companies on AWS that you can collaborate with without sharing or revealing underlying data. And AWS Cleanrooms comes with a broad set of privacy enhancing controls, including cryptographic computing, which I'm going to talk about for uh, enabling these collaborations. There are some built-in flexible analysis rules to tailor queries to your specific business needs. And we're focused in this initial re release of cleanrooms on relational database data. So things in structured relational tables that we bring in and the types of analysis we do are SQL queries. Cleanrooms has a number of extremely useful features that our customers have asked for. So the first is multi-party collaborations. You can collaborate with up to five parties in a single collaboration, and all these parties can work together to gain insights from their combined data. One of the great features of AWS Cleanrooms is that there's no AWS data movement involved. Unlike other Cleanroom products where you actually have to move your data from one place to where the Cleanroom is located, AWS Cleanrooms leverages your existing S3 data and just accesses that data through direct permissioning. So no data movement is involved. 
We provide uh, query controls and enforcement so that we can do things, for example, like if you're computing some aggregate statistics over a cohort of data, we make sure that there's enough elements in that cohort so that no information is revealed if the cohort is too small. We have cryptographic computing, which I'll talk about later in this talk, but that's basically a way to pre-encrypt your data so that your data is encrypted all times, including during query execution. And then finally, AWS Cleanrooms offers programmatic access so that you can build it into your existing workflows, and you can even do things like create white-labeled cleanroom offerings if you want to do so. OK, let me start talking about cryptographic computing. So first, what do I mean by cryptographic computing? Well, in order to understand cryptographic computing, we have to understand it in the context of data protection. When we talk about data protection, we talk about three different types of data protection. The first is protecting data at rest. So this might be, for example, data that's sitting in a file system. It could be data that's sitting in one of your S3 buckets. It could be data that's sitting in a database. And we use technologies like whole disk encryption or S3 bucket encryption or various types of database encryption technology to protect that data while it's sitting there in that storage location. The second type of protection is protecting data in transit. Here we're talking about protecting data as it moves across our networks. And we use things like TLS or IPsec in order to protect that data cryptographically. The third leg of this data protection stool is protecting data in use. And here we want to protect data while computation is actually being performed on it. And there's a number of different ways to do that. Before I talk about how we do this with cryptographic computing, let me talk a little bit about what's called confidential computing. So com the idea behind confidential computing is that you create what's called a trusted execution environment, or sometimes it's called an enclave. And the idea is that this trusted execution environment is a highly hardened, protected virtual environment, often supported by underlying hardware security features and having fancy features such as things like remote attestation. What happens is data goes into the enclave in an encrypted form. It's decrypted within the enclave. Operations can happen inside the enclave on your data. Any result sets can be encrypted and sent out of the applicate, out, out of the enclave. This is a great way to protect data in use. AWS has a great product offering here called AWS Nitro Enclaves. And if confidential computing fits your needs, you should definitely take a look at Nitro. What we're trying to do with cryptographic computing is to raise the bar on security even higher. The idea behind cryptographic computing is that we're going to uh, perform data directly on cryptographic, per, cryptographically protected data without ever having to decrypt the data. So how does that work? Well, cryptographic computing is really not just one thing. It's a set of techniques. And it's everything from uh, general purpose techniques like fully homomorphic encryption, which I'm not going to have time to talk about today, but which could be a whole webinar in itself. It's a fascinating area of of cryptography and one way to do computation on encrypted data. The other general purpose technique, which I'll spend a little bit more time on today, is what's called secure multi-party computation. And then there are a bunch of building blocks which can be used either to solve very purpose-specific problems, solving very narrow types of problems, or they can be used as building blocks to build other things. For example, in the world of secure multi-party computation, we use techniques that are described here on the right, things called garbled circuits and oblivious transfer. And there are other techniques we use in order to build uh, these, these more complex uh, systems. So what exactly is secure multi-party computation? So secure multi-party computation allows multiple parties to jointly compute a function over their input while keeping those in inputs sensitive. So here in this figure, I'm showing four parties. They each have data sets A, B, C, D. And they want to compute some function F on that data in order to produce an output Y. And the idea behind secure multi-party computation is that each party learns the output Y, but nothing else about the other party's data. So that going back to the examples I gave earlier, these four parties could be the four banks I talked about. 
And this function f that they're computing is this trained machine learning model that does fraud detection. And the output y could be the trained model that's the output of that computation. So at the end of this protocol, these four parties learn the trained model, but nothing else. So they don't learn anything about each other's data or any other information besides the trained model. This could also be the case of the footwear company collaborating with the social media site. In that case, there's two parties. Uh, one party brings sales data to the table. The other brings user engagement data to the table. They compute some function, which is some measure of advertising effectiveness. And at the end, they can learn uh, how effective those ads were. OK, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and talk about a very specific uh, secure multi-party protocol called um, private set intersection. And this is an old protocol that's been in the literature for almost 40 years. There's been literally hundreds of papers written on this kind of thing. But the idea is very simple. The idea is I want to collaborate with you. And we each have a set of contacts. So think about, say, contacts in your phone. And so I have a list of my friends, you have a list of your friends. And what we want to do is run a protocol where at the end, we find out what friends we have in common, but we don't learn anything else about each other's data set. So in particular, I don't learn anything about your friends that aren't my friends and vice versa. So it's a very simple idea. There's lots of different ways to solve this problem. Some of them get very complicated. I'm going to describe a a particular uh, solution to this problem that's uh, incredibly simple. So it's the idea of what's called server-aided private set intersection. Uh, and the idea behind this protocol is what happens is the uh, you and I share a, uh, a key out of band, a, a symmetric key. And what we do is we encrypt our set elements with that key. Actually, we do something called an HMAC, which is slightly different than encryption. An HMAC, you can think about an HMAC as kind of a keyed hash function, if that makes sense. But for the purposes of this webinar, let's keep it simple and just think about these data sets being encrypted with a key, and that's some sort of deterministic encryption. So then you and I, we share our encrypted set elements with this trusted third party, this independent party that can look at this data. Now, the independent third party doesn't have access to the shared key. So it doesn't know anything about our data. It can't infer any information at all. It just sees a bunch of random strings. And in fact, for every different key we use, it sees different random strings for different underlying set elements. But this independent server can compare these encrypted data elements and figure out where the intersection is and then report back to us where the intersection is. And then we learn who's in the intersection. So the, the useful thing about server-aided private set intersection is that it's extremely fast and scalable. It's all based on standard crypto using symmetric key cryptography. So this can share to sets of billions of elements without any problem. Now, the thing about private set intersection that's useful for the clean rooms context is what we're going to do is we're going to use private set intersection as the basis for a database join. And you can see why that is, because when we join two tables uh, based on some key in a database, effectively, we're computing an intersection of those joined key columns. So you can see how private set is intersection can hopefully be used for a join. And that brings us to this tool we've introduced called Cryptographic C Computing for Clean Rooms, or C3R for short. So what is it? So cryptographic computing for clean rooms is a feature of AWS clean rooms. It allows you to pre-encrypt your data for use in AWS clean room collaborations so that your data is encrypted all times during the clean room uh, computation. It's an open source client side encryption tool. We put it on GitHub free of charge to customers and I'll have a link later in the webinar for you uh, where to find it. Uh, it's, a, it's a Java SDK that you can integrate into your existing workflows, or it has a simple command line interface that you can use to easily run commands. 
And it uses this secure multi-party computation protocol called private set intersection that I just talked about, the server-aided private set intersection, to be able to compute joins on tables. And then we use other cryptographic tricks to be able to support other forms of SQL. So things like select statements and various types of other SQL constructs. Uh, today, we support data that is either in CSV or Parquet files, and those will be those will live on your S3 buckets. Uh, in the future, we may support future uh, data formats. So how does it work? Well, we've gone to great lengths to make this work seamlessly with AWS Cleanrooms. So the idea is you create an AWS Cleanroom collaboration almost exactly as you would for a non-encrypted version of a Cleanroom collaboration. The only difference is there's a few settings you can pick in the console when you go to create that collaboration. Then you encrypt your data using this C3R open source client-side encryption tool, and you upload your data to an S3 bucket. From here, you use AWS Cleanrooms as normal to run your query. Um, you can run what are called aggregation queries. You can run list queries. Uh, they all work with C3R. And then in the event that any results are encrypted, you use this C3R tool to decrypt it. So it's very easy to use. So I'm going to walk through a couple of very simple examples just to kind of show basically how to work to give you a sense for how it works, basically to give you a sense for how C3R works. So the first example is in marketing measurement. So again, this is the example I talked about earlier. Imagine we have a footwear company, any company footwear, they sell shoes of different types. They place ads on a social media site called Example Social Media. And they want to do some sort of A-B testing to determine how different ads are correlated with sales of their products in order to improve their marketing campaigns. So here's a very sort of simple example of their data. Any company footwear tracks sales in a table called transactions. They identify their users through their email address, and they have various products that they've sold to those users, hiking boots, dress shoes, sneakers, and so on. Example, social media tracks views of ads in a table called views. Here, again, they identify their customers by an email address, and they've shown them either a nature ad or a sports ad. So the actual SQL query you want to run to do this A-B test measurement could look something like this. Essentially, you're going to join that views table to the transactions table based on the user email address. Then you're going to group by the product ID and the ad ID and just simply count how many times did a given user see a particular ad and buy a particular product. And we want to do is in this particular query, we're going to use this private set intersection primitive that's built into C3R in order to be able to perform the join. And so we use C3R to do this H banking operation on these columns to turn these join columns into cryptographically protected columns that can then be joined. The queries just run. And in this particular case, the, you get clear text results, which are just counts of the number of times a particular product was bought given a particular ad. And so in our hypothetical example here, we see that you know, users who saw sports ads were more likely to buy sneakers, and users who saw nature ads were more likely to buy hiking boots. OK, I'll show one more example just to show a few other aspects of this. So in this case, we want to do a problem called audience enrichment. So again, coming back to our footwear company, any company footwear knows that visitors to their website have purchase intent, or at least they have some interest in shoes, but they don't know much else about these customers coming in. So if they could somehow augment their customer data with some demographic information, they could create more accurate targeted messaging for their customers, increase the ROI on their ads campaigns, and, and hopefully increase their revenue. So there's a company called Example Demographics that has data that can help them. So again, let's go back and look at the data we have. Any company footwear might have a list of customers. Example demographics has a table of customers they know about identified by the email address. And maybe they know, say, for example, their occupation, they're a manager or an engineer or whatever, and some affinity groups they belong to. So maybe they're a sports fan or a travel buff or a political junkie. 
So here, the SQL query we want to run is, again, we want to join these two tables. We're going to join the customer table to the demographics table based on this email address. And we want to know for every user in the any company footwear data, what, it, what does the example demographics know about their occupation and affinity group? But here we want to encrypt everything. So we use uh, C3R again to encrypt not only the join columns, but also the columns that are going to be used in select statements. And this is what's called a list query in AWS cleanrooms. So we run the query and we get the results. And what happens is that any, com any company footwear who had just simply a list of users at the beginning, at the end of this computation, they're given a, sort of an augmented list of their users with their occupation and infinity group. In this particular case, Example Demographics didn't know anything about this customer, Bob, but it happened to have information about four of the other customers that are shown here. Okay, so those are just two very, very simple examples of how you can use C3R to do some very basic uh, SQL operations. C3R can do more than that. We provide other types of support for SQL. There are more complicated queries you can run and so on. Okay, that's essentially what I have today. Let me just run through a summary of what we talked about. So I started by telling you about data collaboration and the types of uh, use cases you might want to do data collaboration where you have multiple orga organizations participating in a collaborative effort. I talked about this new service we've, we've introduced called AWS Cleanrooms that allows you to set up uh, collaborations with sensitive data sets uh, very simply and easily. Then I walked you through what cryptographic computing is. In particular, I talked about how it's an approach for protecting data in use by uh, allowing operations that operate directly on cryptographically protected data. And I talked about secure multi-party computation. And then I talked about a specific form of secure multi-party computation called private set intersection. From there, I went into cryptographic computing for clean rooms and described what this new feature is that we've introduced, which is an open source client side encryption tool that allows customers to pre encrypt data for their use in AWS clean room collaborations, and then walked you through some examples of how that works. And if you want to find out more, I've put some links here or QR codes if you want to scan them with your phone. Uh, there's a link here if you want to find out more about AWS clean rooms. We have a landing page for our work on cryptographic computing, which has information not just about C3R, but about all the other projects and work we've done in the, in the space of cryptographic computing. And then finally, if you want to try out cryptographic computing for clean rooms, you can go to our GitHub site, which is at this location shown here at the bottom. So thank you for your time. Thank you for spending time learning some things here with me at this webinar, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.